So you, you mentioned quaternions, and, and, and I want to get into that because, first of all, I think quaternions are super interesting, and then you can get mm -hmm. you know deep into the math where it's kind of just really crazy. Um, but one thing that I'm struggling with, and I kind of want to get your guidance on, is that I'm currently working on making a video about Euler angles, and I'm a little bit struggling to find out because I know mathematically this is how you use them, this is how you describe one reference frame with respect to another using Euler angles. But how did you use, and in general, how do you use Euler angles, or if you do for spacecraft attitude control, for doing analysis on a control system? And, and also that versus quaternions, and then when do you do one versus the other? Yeah, so quaternions, <clears throat> which, is, which is using four elements to, um, to represent a rotation. Um, between two coordinate frames. So that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about a rotation um, is, is a very, I mean, there's a lot of benefits to using it within flight software. You know, you don't have the gimbal lock problem. You don't have nine elements that you have with a direction cosine matrix. You only have the four, so it's very compact. Um, and you can set up a, a multiplicative Kalman filter to, to do all of your attitude estimation in in you know quad, with quaternions and all of that stuff but they tend to be a lot harder to visualize and understand and so we did all of our processing in with quaternions on the flight software but then we did all of our visualization in well not all of it but the majority of our visualization in Euler angles so when we determine how um you know, just we're 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 looking at at uh, a time history of pointing, for example. Mm -hmm. More often than not, we would convert that into something that we can look at and make some sense of. Even if it was, um, you know, we didn't have to do this, but even if it was like a small angle approximation, mm -hmm. which is oh, as long as uh, you know, like a like a zero like a no rotation of a quaternion is like one zero 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 assuming the scalar is first, um, then, then as long as the rotation off of that is really small, all of those three numbers after the one is all really, really small, you can just take those and, I uh, can't remember it off the top of my head here, but like double it, and those are the radians um, in Euler angles, approximately, uh, something like that. Uh, you know, you could, you could get a sense of how, how things are, are, are progressing in your control system very quickly just by by looking at it that way um, so i agree like euler angles degrees those types of things are much easier often for humans to interpret but we we wanted to keep everything consistent within flight software so there's no reason to use degrees within flight software for us there was no reason to use anything other than quaternions because the computer is interacting with itself there. The software is interacting with itself. Only, only as an outsider, when I command something, we may want to command it in degrees, possibly. We may want to view it in Euler angles, possibly. All of that stuff are sort of wrappers that we would put, uh, or, or, you know, or post-processing algorithms that we would po put outside of flight software. Everything within flight software is consistent with with units um, that that are set up for the algorithms themselves and not for people to interact with them. So putting you on the spot a little bit, is there any way mm -hmm. do you think that you could intuitively explain quaternions? Because I, I think they're super interesting and just, you know, the fact that they're four dimensional imaginary numbers is kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, do you have anything yeah. that you use in your head that you kind of, for yourself, just intuitively just what a quaternion is? Well, like a quaternion, you know, the specifics of how those numbers come about can be a little bit mind bending. But I think in terms of angle axis, mm. um, like representation makes a lot more sense. So uh, the, the, the craziest thing about angle axis, in my mind, is that you can, you can describe any rotation, like if I have my phone here, I can get from this orientation to any other orientation 
by rotating along a single well-defined axis. So I can go from here with this vertical axis here and rotate around it this way. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And I can rotate it around it this way. But if I rotate it around some crazy angle off to the side, it's gonna do some kind of weird flip and it's gonna end up somewhere. So the key, the, the, the key to angle axis is that some axis in, in, in any direction, and you know, if you define that axis and you rotate around that axis some amount of radians, mm -hmm. you can get to any other rotation. So that's sort of the key behind it. And the intuition behind that is, is lost on me right now. I wouldn't know how to explain like why that's the case. Uh, but if we go in with that assumption that that's the case, things start to make a lot more sense. So now, instead of Euler, where you're saying rotate first in this axis, then in this axis, and then that axis, instead of doing three rotations, you're only doing one. And you're doing one rotation around some axis that's really strange, like some weird direction. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So now you can find that axis, determine how far to rotate along that axis, and you got your four numbers. The axis is defined by three of those numbers, and then the, the angle around that is defined by a fourth number. But now you, now you have to say like, well, that's not quite what a quaternion is because a quaternion is like normalized to one and they have all of these weird mathematical rules. But essentially the underlying concept of a quaternion as it relates to rotations is that it's an angle and an axis. And then some math is done to package it into the quaternion form so that whatever it is, like I squared equals J squared equals K squared equals I times J times K equals negative one or whatever, whatever uh, you know, that, that is that I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, but there's some sort of logic um, to it. But the other thing that, that helps is that just like a, an imaginary number is a two dimensional number, a quaternion is just a four dimensional number. It's just, you know, four dimensions and each dimension represents something akin to an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis um, component and an angle, a scalar value around that axis. And if you do a, a, a principal axis rotation, it makes sense in quaternion world too. So this is, um, zero, let's say this is one zero zero zero. And I don't know, I'll say that this is the y-axis. Okay. So if I rotate whatever 90 degrees, then it becomes zero, zero, one, zero. Like that one is in the y-axis point. I did, I did a max rotation in one direction in the y-axis. Um, that, that didn't help at all, I'm realizing. But um, if you start using them enough, you can kind of, I, I, I'm not there yet. I mean, some people can look at quaternions and I feel like, you know, they just, they just see it. Um, you know, certain rotations I can look at and be like, oh, okay, I kind of get it. Um, but, but they are useful. And I guess that's why we use them. Mm -hmm.